Hello and welcome back to another Spectacularly Thing. This is part two of our three-part series on the Raspberry Pi NAS. In part one, we looked at the SATA hat and top board with case and built it with four two and a half inch, two terabyte hard drives. In this part, we are going to look at some software for the for this NAS, and it's called Open Media Vault. Open Media Vault is free and open software that allows you to administer a a NAS solution such as the one that we are building here. It's a web-based interface and it makes things easy to to do. So we're going to go through several steps. The first is we have here a plain um, vanilla Raspbian, excuse me, Raspberry Pi OS. Um, then we're going to install the software for the the SATA hat and top board. We're going to create a RAID and then we're going to install the Open Media Vault software. Finally, we will look at how to administer the software. So let's get going. As I said before, this is just a plain Raspberry Pi OS install. There's nothing on it. And so we need to first uh, configure it. So we do that by typing raspy config, sudo raspy config and hit enter. Now I've sped this up quite a bit because, well, it's just your plain ordinary uh, setup. So I changed the name of the computer to Sam. I changed the password. Now I'm changing the locale from ENGB to ENUS. This will just take one second here. And next we're going to change the time zone to America Los Angeles. That's the time zone that I'm in. And finally we're going to change the memory split to 16, gig uh, 16 megabytes so that we can uh, uh, eke out every last bit of performance that we can out of this little machine. We update the software and we finish. Next we want to do the typical uh, sudo apt upgrade, sudo apt update that we would normally do. Here I've sped this up about 400% because this is just standard Raspberry Pi OS uh, updates. And there's a lot of them. <laughs> this version of Raspberry Pi OS came out in August and I'm recording this in November so there's quite a few updates to be had. Okay, now we just do a quick reboot to make sure that everything is up to date. And we're back in the system. So the first thing that we want to do after updating is we want to curl sl https colon slash slash rock dot sh slash git dash rock pi excuse me rock pi dash sata pipe that to sudo dash e bash. This will install the software for the sata hat and top board. And this will get the um, the drives recognized and that top that top port part where the um, uh, information panel is, all of that will get initialized with this software. And again, I'm speeding this up about 200% so that you can see it quickly. Now that we've installed the uh, software and rebooted. We can hear the drives running in the background. I can see the panel um, updating. So next we're going to install the RAID, the software RAID. To do that we need to install some software. So we type sudo apt install mdadm and hit enter. And this will install the software required for uh, doing the software RAID. Software RAID is a very bad idea. I'll just tell you that right now. Um, especially on a Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> it takes up a lot of the processor usage and it's really slow. That's just a foreshadowing of what we're about to see. Now that we've done that, let's list our block <laughs> block devices. You can see here we have SDA1, SDA2, uh, excuse me, SDA, SDA1, SDB, SDB1, SDC, SDC1, SDD, and SDD1. These are our four drives that we had installed in the last part. Um, we're going to take these four drives and put them into a RAID array. Um, to do that, 
we'd use the sudo mdm create command. And let's see. Yeah, we use the sudo mdm dash dash create dash dash verbose slash dev slash md slash and we're going to name this volume one dash dash level equals five so this is going to be a raid level five array then there are four devices because there's four drives and this is dev slash sda1 dev slash sdb1 dev slash sdc1 and dev slash sdd1 and then we hit enter and this will create the raid array now I've left this in normal time so you can see how fast this goes now that the raid array has been created we need to save it in such a way so that after every reboot the RAID array is there because this is software RAID and not hardware RAID. To do that we need to go down to the root and create an mdadm config file. For some reason even if you say sudo do this command it doesn't create the file. Not sure why that's just the way it is. So to do this uh, maybe if some of you have an idea you can comment down below on how to do that part but for this I am going to do an interactive sudo go down to root and type in this command mdadm excuse me mdadm dash dash detail dash dash scan detail dash dash scan and pipe that to etsy slash mdadm slash mdadm.conf and then enter. Then we can verify that this took place by catting this file so we can see the contents. And there it is. Looks good. Let's exit out of root. And we'll give it a good old-fashioned reboot just to clear everything up. After we reboot, we can type in sdo, <laughs> excuse me, sudo mdmadm dash dash detail slash dev slash md slash volume one. And you can see that our RAID array is still here. Great. Now let's go ahead and install the Open Media Vault software. To do that, we type wget dash o dash space https colon slash slash github.com slash open media vault dash plugin dash developers slash install script slash raw slash master slash install and we'll pipe that to sudo bash Now this takes about 20 minutes to install. I've sped it up here 2000% so that it goes by pretty quick. Once it's finished though, it'll reboot and then we can go into the uh, user interface. The user interface is on the web and you will see that in just a minute here. After your re Raspberry Pi has rebooted, you can open up a browser and go to the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, or in my case, the name of my Raspberry Pi. And then you can log in. The default username and password is admin, and the password is Open Media Vault. That's Open Media Vault, all one word, all lowercase. And we're in. First thing we should do is change that password. So let's go to General Settings, click on Web Administrator Password, and put in a new password.
and click Save. Next, we want to go to Web Administration and change the auto logout from 5 minutes to something like 60 minutes because what we're going to do takes a long time. Click Save and then click Apply Configuration Changes when it pops up. Great. Next, we can go to Update Management and we can select the packages here that need to be updated. This is basically the same thing as typing uh, sudo apt upgrade and seeing what packages are available there. We're going to go ahead and check this box and click the install button to install this update. This will be done really quick. There. Open Media Vault has a rich ecosystem of plugins. Each plugin is available for this system. <laughs> there are plugins for backup and, well, ZFS is a plugin also, but we're just going to leave it as is with the standard install. And then we're going to scroll down here to disks under storage. And you can see our physical disks in the, in the Raspberry Pi. When we click on RAID management, you can see that we have our RAID array listed here, but it's listed as degraded. Now I'm not sure why it's degraded. It's probably because I had a previous install of this that it's rebuilding that array from. Before I do any tests, we'll let that clean up. Next, let's go to file systems. You'll notice that there's only two file systems here, the boot and the root FS. We want to create a new file system for our RAID array. Click the Create button, then select the RAID array from the device list. Give it a label, such as Shares, and click OK. Now for the long part. Say yes, and this will take quite a while. On my system, because this is a, well, it's eight terabytes of storage, it took about an hour to do this part. I've sped this up 8,000% so you can still see what happens, but just know that this will take a long time on your Raspberry Pi. Now that the file system has been created, go ahead and close this Create File System dialog with the Close button. You can see here that we've created our, file, our ext4 file system, but it's not mounted yet. So click the Mount button and click Apply. Yes, you really want to con change the configuration. And there it is, 5.41 terabytes show up on our shares folder. That's because this is RAID 5. We need one disk for, well, we need roughly the equivalent of one disk for the parity bit. Next, we click down on uh, shared folders under access rights management to create a folder to share. We click add, give it a name such as documents, Select the device, which is that shared folder that we just created, or shared drive that we just created. Change the permissions so that everyone has read and write access, and click Save. And click Apply. Next, we want to go down to under Services to SMB CIFS. Because we're going to create an SMB share, we want to enable SMB, click Save, and apply changes. Yes. Then we want to specify what shares to allow through SMB. 
select the shared folder from the drop down and then under public we want to change this to guests allowed and click save we don't want to change any of these other settings And that's it for the setting up of Open Media Vault. Next, we're going to look at some folders, at the folders on Windows. So on the right, we have our folder share. I'm sorry, this is a little hard to see, but I'll describe it as best I can. On the right is our folder share, uh, the documents folder on our network device. My name, uh, on my computer, it's called Sam, so it's slash slash Sam slash downloads. And on the left, we have a folder on my local machine that has a file. This is a Windows ISO file that's about four and a half gigabytes in size. And we're going to copy this file over to our NAS to see how fast it can transfer data. Now, I have a one gigabit per second network here in my office. And so this should be running at about 100, meg 100 megabytes per second. But instead, we see that it it settles down around 30 megabytes per second and it's pretty slow it's really slow in fact now this is probably because of the software raid and to prove that in the next clip I'm going to uh, change this from using raid to just using one of those devices one of those drives in the NAS but this is just too slow and it's not not usable the way that it is now now here you can see on the left, on the right, excuse me, we have Open Media Vault. And what I've done is I've broken the RAID array, so there's no RAID, as you can see here, at all. And under File Systems, I've taken just SDA1 and created a f um, a two terabyte uh, ext4 file system on it. And under shared folders, I created a shared folder just on SDA1, which you can see on the bottom of the left side. This is Sam slash shares. And I'm going to copy that same 4.5 gigabyte ISO from my local machine to that shared folder. And yes, we want to copy without its permissions. Now you can see that it maxes out that uh, gigabit um, Ethernet connection that I have here in my office at around 111 meg per second, which is really good. This is what we were expecting. This is what I was expecting to see under the RAID array. But like I said, that software RAID array is just really poor performance. So thank you for watching this part two of our NAS, Raspberry Pi NAS ser series. Please stick with me for part three, where I will do an, a ZFS array on an Ubuntu server. That will be coming up in a few days. So thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Comment below if you have any comments. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching this spectacular thing.